there is no end. There, there are so many satisfying ways to kill zombies. Am I wrong? It's like you just want to fucking kill all of them and be so happy doing it. Uh, you guys ready to meet your panelists today? Are you ready to meet your panelists today? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, wait, let me make sure they're even ready to go. Joel? Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, because <laughs> I get myself in trouble sometimes. Ladies and gentlemen, in no particular order, but in this particular order, please welcome to the stage Marie Avgeropoulos, Jessica Harmon, Keegan Connor Tracy, Pat Williams, Tim Carter, Tomas Harlan, and Bryce Cochran. Give it up for these folks, everybody. Come on. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, how are you? Hello. I'm Zach. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi. Oh, no, go ahead. Use that table. Hi, <laughs> nice to meet you. Welcome, welcome. Some of you have been here before. Some of you have not been here before. This is the craziest, funnest shit show you'll ever be a part of. This is Nerd HQ. Uh, basically, everybody just gets to ask you questions, and I just get to sit here and be a little shithead. So, uh, who, that's, that's my job. I know. Oh, is it your job? Fantastic. Uh, instead of uh, taking photos, who would like to ask a question? It's <laughs> difficult to ask a question when there's a camera in your hand. Nobody has any awesome. questions? You all came to this yeah, panel? So you know, we're yes, done here. right yeah. in the front. Thank you very much. Hello, where's Jesse Metcalf? <laughs> that is such a good I question. I <laughs> beg your pardon? <laughs> Where, where's my That's phone? the only Let's question that it. came to mind? That's all you could think of. No, I didn't think of something else. Sure, look. Um, um, right now. We killed him. We <laughs> I didn't hear he got bit by a zombie while we were shooting this last one, and it didn't no, go that well. It's a mercy killing. That was lovely. Um, give me your best experience on set. Oh. Or like, or, or maybe even goriest. Well, I've never, um, I've killed a lot of people during my career. <laughs> Not I don't actually. think you should tell everybody that. that. That's a bad thing. I know. I know. Maybe that's why they denied my green card twice. <laughs> Um, <laughs> hashtag Canadian problems. Um, the, my most enjoyable and memorable part um, was the most unique way I got to kill a character this time, and that was stabbing him in the junk. Did anyone see the movie yet? Spoiler alert. One girl. <laughs> and it was actually Spoiler. my idea to kill him that way, because it was a lot of fun. It was revenge, um, because he got to cop a feel in an inappropriate way, so I figured he should really pay for it. Have you just been waiting to stab a dude in the junk for a long time? I mean, not a long time. It was her <laughs> idea. So Wish yes, fulfillment. Has, yeah. That's what that was. And? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Favorite, oh, me, my turn. Uh, favorite moment. Oof. I don't know. I mean, there was standing out in the rain. That was cool. And then there was hiding in the <laughs> trunk of the Land Rover, pretending to be on the phone. That was fun, too. Uh, I didn't get to kill any zombies, so... It, it, I didn't have as much fun as these guys did in terms of their brutality, but I just had a lot of fun on set. Oh, my favorite actually was when I did get to meet the zombies, like I said earlier, at craft service, because I was supposed to meet zombies. I was supposed to be in there with them, with the bats, staple gun. <laughs> Me and my staple gun. They're like, there's no staple gun, Miss Arm. Like, there's a staple gun in my movie. Um, and yeah, craft service was really fun because I actually got to interact with the zombies while they were on their smoke break. And <laughs> so cool. That was, that, was, that was my moment. It's super trippy when those guys and girls are all made up in it's death. Weird. And then they're like, hi, how are you? How's your day? Yeah. The weather's fucking weird, right? Yeah. I had a whole conversation with a zombie who had a cleaver in his head <laughs> while we were talking. <laughs> A cleaver. Did you offer him some Advil? Like, that looks like it hurts. Like, you're going to need some leave, for, I think. You're going to go, like, extra strength on that. Is, that. is that your moment, or is there another moment you want to talk about? I, well, mine's kind of a little bit of a spoiler. Like, if people haven't seen it, am I allowed to? Well, it's too bad. Here, oh, your bosses back. are sitting next to you. You can ask oh, them. They're like, just sell the movie. I crush a man's skull with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> which that was awesome. Yes. That was, like, nice. It was really kind of very satisfying to do that. I'm hoping he was a zombie. Uh, or was it just a dude who was like, yo, whoa, 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 he gave whoa, her a whoa. Ticket. Yeah, I caught him in my trailer. I was like, dude, what the? It's the first no, time. He's not in the movie. Did it have to be in the movie? <laughs> or your life. That's fine. Uh, Pat, any any? Because that was just an extra, actually. He didn't, uh, he wasn't supposed to be that. Cop to feel, and I couldn't stab him in the junk because she already did that. So I had to crush his skull. 
Yeah, it's funny Marie brought up the stabbing teach grant and the junk moment because that was, uh, that was inspired totally by her. And we had an early meeting and we talked about this scene. I said, hey, listen, I got this guy. I want him to, you know, grab you in an inappropriate fashion. She goes, well, what happens next? Is he dying? I said, yeah, he dies. Do I get to kill him? I said, what do you got in mind? She says, well, if he's going to cop a feel, I'd like to stab him in the junk. <laughs> and uh, so I showed up to work the next day and told Tim, I says, I got a scene for us. <laughs> and, uh, and Tim uh, wrote the scene, and, and I had a blast shooting that. It was a cool moment to build towards that. Once again, just a really busy morning, lots of flame and pyro going on, and, and a big action sequence to knock off in an, un, uh, an inappropriate amount of time. I think we had five or six hours for it. But it finished with Marie stabbing Teach in the junk, and if you, none of you know Teach Grant, he's a wonderful guy. He always plays a badass, but uh, he loved it. He thought it was the coolest thing. He thought it was. He great. loved getting stabbed in the junk. He just loved it. He said, "I've never had that before, right?" And he get Marie stabbing me in the junk. I'll do that all day long. <laughs> you also got a really interesting window into her soul when she pitched that. <laughs> you like, you want to do? Okay, I need to go talk to the team about that. Marie, by the way, uh, Tim. Uh, I think I'd say one of my favorite moments was, um, and it's kind of a multi-moment experience. The the cover art for Dead Rising One, the video game, has Frank West with a huge escalator behind him. And so when we were starting the movie, and, and this movie was sort of like almost written two locations as we're going, Tomas and I said, we got to find an escalator. The, this movie has to have a huge escalator in it. And we looked and looked and looked, and they were always in boring places or impossible to shoot places until we found this, uh, basically a decommissioned post office with this massive one. And so that was just a Is moment. that the one we saw in the trailer? Yeah, the one oh, okay. in, the, in the show. It's just like, oh my God, this is gonna be great. And so then the day we shot it, when we were shooting like big action sequences all the way down the escalator, I just sat at the bottom going like, this is awesome, because it was exactly the, the moment from the game. It's amazing how difficult it is, by the way, when you're scouting locations to find something that seemingly is very innocuous. Like, oh, I need to find an, uh, an escalator but you need to find the right escalator. Yeah. You need to find that one escalator that's gonna, you know, we can choreograph all this shit and really kill a lot of zombies on it. Tomas, memories? Yeah, continuing thematically with the, uh, the junk story here. <laughs> building, <laughs> building it's off never of, gonna leave, by the way. It's no, just gonna no, be junk all day. Building off of uh, the escalator scene, so again, we didn't pre-build this for the set, and there were these metal discs every five feet. As Jesse slides down, he oh, splits yeah. his legs across the escalator. As he slides down, there's these metal discs. And when we tried it the first time, you have to hold your, your junk up or it would just be damaged repeatedly every five feet. So we actually built a special little sled, which hopefully you won't see when you watch the film. It's been covered up nicely. But to avoid said junk damage. <laughs> That's why they put the discs in those areas. I think you're right. Because when I'm a, I was a kid, before, before pre-disc, uh, pre-disc, <laughs> You're a kid and you're looking at all these fucking elevators, you're like, I could slide the fuck out of this yeah, right now. Right, yeah. And then all of a sudden, when I was like 15, I'm like, where are all these fucking discs come from? <laughs> now my junk's fucked up. But, but you can buy the junk sled on eBay now, so it's... And you can get the sled now. It's the Dead Rising junk sled. Yeah. Hashtag junk sled. Right. This all right. <laughs> and this is all we're on to maybe, maybe we're on Jesse something. Metcalf isn't here. <laughs> oh, because he's, he's junkless. <laughs> he's working that out, guys. Don't worry, don't worry. Right. Uh, yeah, for me, well, I'm the developer of the game, so working with these I guys. Mean, round of applause. Yeah. Uh, Come on. Yes. Thank you. Uh, oh, by the way, a title that has lasted the test of time. You guys have made many, many versions of an incredible, uh, incredible game oh, that so many people continue to play. Yeah. That we have here at HQ. Yeah, anyway, we continue. Yes, we do. You should try it upstairs. It's Amazing. coming out December 6th. Pre-order now. Uh, but back to the movie. Yes. Um, the best thing for us was uh, working with these guys, but also we had an opportunity to allow a lot of our developers from the studio to be zombies in the film. So seeing those guys on set and seeing them interact with the, the, the real Hollywood feel was really great for us. And watching that in the movie where it's like, oh, that's a tester. Oh, there's a programmer. And just, <laughs> they loved it and it was amazing. Just covered in blood as well. So and it was a great time. I'll add to that that it was a bitterly cold day and uh, all of the Capcom guys had to run as zombies after our heroes as they raced to a helicopter on a big open thing. So they're like coming in, shivering and shaking and come on to me, is it okay? This is awesome. Yeah. And it's like, okay, yeah. run again. They loved it. We're, we're behind the scenes usually, so it's been awesome to get in front of the cameras. Well, and also, the t I mean, I would imagine the type of people as a gamer and somebody who's read comic books and stuff like that and watched so many movies and TV shows, uh, but if you're creating those worlds, 
if you, like you're saying, if you're constantly just the one being like, oh, look at all this cool shit that I get to make, but I don't get to be in it, and which was like VR and AR, like that stuff I think is gonna like totally blow people's minds in the future, and it's like the future is now. But to offer all those guys and girls like, hey, so you made all these really cool zombies, you wanna be one? They're like, fuck yes, let me go shoot me in the head. Can you stab me in the junk? Can you do that? <laughs> Can you do that? Uh, next question, yes, you sir, right there. Um, uh, please stand. Please stand. Be seen. Uh, I nice remember, shirt. Um, Clash of the Titans coming out in '76, something like that, and then everybody started making uh, like sod and sandals movies. Then Star Wars comes out and starts everybody starts making uh, space movies. Mm. Zombie movies have been around for a few years. Do you think there will actually come a time where? Uh, people don't want to see any more zombie movies, or is there just too much? Boo! No, no, is, is, is <laughs> no, no that's deep. Much? That's deep. Is, is there too much uh, media so you'll actually find this on niche online or Netflix or something like that? Do, do you think you're actually just going to keep going where everybody's making everything at the same time instead of going through cycles? What? Well, we, talk, we talk about zombie saturation all the time, and that's a good question, and, and wondering when it'll ever end, right? But um, I think when Shaun of the Dead came out, it brought a, a whole new sensibility to it. And then you've got, I haven't seen the Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I mean, I, I think next is probably Zombie Shark, if it hasn't already been done. Uh, you know, look. Uh, without, Zombie NATO. Zombie NATO. Without going into, like, you know, taking too far off track, zombies are soulless, right? And, and you don't really feel guilty about killing them. It's not like an investment you have in a character with a vampire or a werewolf or other. Um, and so you can imbue them with almost anything. And, and, Hey, zombies go with anything. They, they taste like whatever you put there. Uh, <laughs> Tastes like chicken. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, ultimately, I ask the same question. It's really kind of, it's interesting. I mean, you know, we, we look at this franchise and things we want to do with it, talking with Capcom and where they go next with it. And, uh, but I still love playing the game. And uh, I still love the concept of taking down a zombie in any kind of creative way I can. And uh, Marie will probably figure out some kind of combo weapon to a junk blaster or something <laughs> specifically. If we could change the rules of zombies so that they could actually be killed, not just by taking out the head, but by blowing out their junk. I mean, that would be a one kill shot right there that wouldn't even need multiple hits. There you go. It's quick and it's efficient. <laughs> I'm glad she's on the other end. <laughs> um, anybody, anybody else have anything to add? I, I, I would say that uh, the, uh, we're gonna be making zombie content until actual zombies just start taking over the world, <laughs> and then we're all fucked anyway, so, you know. Uh, can you give him a microphone again? I, I was just saying that you did the Hug a Zombie uh, video a few years back. I was just wondering- Oh, that little viral video? Yeah. Oh, we, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, are you going to make more? Not of hooker them? zombie. Not <laughs> hooker zombie. That's not. No, no, no. It was hug. H U G. Yeah. Well, hug a zombie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you have an excellent accent that makes it difficult, for, that 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 makes it difficult for us to understand what you're saying. <laughs> I um, love uh, Yeah. No. But but look, even that kind of still played into the world that we're all in. You know, I mean, zombie movies, zombie content has been around for so long. And genuinely, like at the end of the trailer that we played. My comment was, how satisfying is it to kill zombies? I think the, I think part of why we all love zombie shit so much is be, like, look at The Walking Dead or anything. It's you. What you want to watch is how are you gonna kill that fucking zombie? That's what you want to watch. Is it a spear? Is it a knife? Is it a gun? Is it a bomb? Are you gonna get them in the junk? That's what's fun, <laughs> because they're soulless. We don't fucking care about them. We just want to kill them. What's that? Zombie kill of the week. Oh no, I don't know. I don't know about it. Right, zombie. Oh, okay. Have it on our phones? Again, you're from another country. This is very difficult. You need this to is very just watch difficult. Zombieland. Yeah, watch Zombieland. <laughs> Fantastic! Or Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah. Next question, right there. Hi, so this is a question for everybody. Um, if you were in the situation that your characters were in in real life, um, what, if you could only use one weapon, what would it be and why to survive the zombie apocalypse? Mm. Staple gun. <laughs> <laughs> I want a fucking staple gun in the third one, there, guys. The Give man. me that staple gun. Yeah, it's I gonna take five hours to kill a zombie, but I want one. <laughs> 
a spiked bat. I definitely got the best weapon. Sorry, guys. There's a reason why it's the one that's most used on the game, and I was so stoked to use it, and it was so fun to use as well. Keegan? Uh, this, this morning, I came up with something that was like a flamethrower that also shot razor blades out of it. <laughs> Like it had like a, uh, uh, like that. Yeah, like a, you know, kind of like an AK-47, but with razor blades and flames shooting out of it. Like a little you backpack know? with all the like ammo that. in it. Like, shit, yeah. See that? I have a, I have a future in like, <laughs> it, weird it, it fully, fully, yeah, yeah, it yeah all the sound mixing. Thank you, good night. Pat? You know, I like Jesse's weapon in the movie. Uh, the you pussy know, thrasher, that's what we yeah. call him. I'm sorry, what? We named all of our weapons. And what was your? What was yours? Mine was fourth base. <laughs> Spike bat. Well done. I, I didn't have one because I didn't. Staple gun. Yours was so swing line. Mine gun. was my phone. And swing like, line staple. Yeah, yeah, like, like a camera or something. My, and what? And yours mouth. was. Mine was the stab chop. The stab. Wait, where was the pussy threat? What? That's I'm, Jesse. Jesse. Jesse oh, Jesse had thrasher. the pussy threat. For obvious reasons, right? So I'd use a pussy, pussy thrasher. And, uh, as it, and as a director of the movie, this is the first time I've heard this. Uh, this is what we don't hear. It's what the, I wasn't listening to the actors when they weren't spy, speaking their well, lines. We were doing so the I, real work. We were messing around. We were waiting for you to figure it out. So yeah. if you've seen the movie, the pussy thrasher is the way to go. It, it's, it's, it's got a spear on one end. It's got a blade on the other. You can get them coming at you from both ways. Damn right. Yeah. What exactly are we talking about right now? <laughs> this is That's my kind of weapon. Director speak usually. That is my kind of weapon, Tim. I yeah, it's a pretty much impossible to top that. I think. Uh, um, you know, someone reminded me on an earlier panel that uh, the katana is awesome in the game, so I'm going to have to go with that. It doesn't have nearly the amount of sort of sexual undertones, but <laughs> it, it would be good for survival. Tomas. I gotta say, my, my weapon of choice is t entirely useless. And Bryce, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a um, it's a bot head comboed with a lawnmower and you bend over 45 degrees and you just run through zombies. I found to be, what's that called? Oh, I can't remember that one. We have what's so that? many combo weapons. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm lost That's on that. that, sorry. You oh, made no. the game for God's sake. I know. I, <laughs> the fuck? We have hundreds and hundreds of weapons and combining them, I can't remember them all. It's always a problem for me. I, just I put pussy in front of it, it'll be yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> Bryce, what's pussy your weapon? Chopper, what's yeah. your the pussy uh, chopper? What's yeah, your weapon of choice? Me, I, I think I'm gonna go old school. A fire axe would be the perfect thing for me. The spike on one side and the blade on the other. Mm -hmm. You you can clear a path pretty fast with those. Sturdy. Yeah. Sturdy. Old school. Uh, next question. Yes, up in the back there, that guy. Uh, this is more of a statement for Zach. Last year when you flew out, uh, you you stopped at my bar, uh, in the airport. This what are we talking about? Uh, when you flew out last year from Comic Con, you. When stopped... I flew out where? When I. From here. To oh, when I flew, when I left here. Yeah. You okay. Stopped at my now bar. I'm following. So I stopped, stopped at, at your bar. At my bar, yeah. At the airport. At the airport, yeah. Oh. Just wanted to invite you back, and then. <laughs> <laughs> if you're what do I look like, an alcoholic? Yeah. A little bit. No. Uh, and then I had a question for the developers. Um, he mentioned something about you know the zombie, the zombie culture just kind of like fading out. Any thoughts of like crossing them over with some of the other cultures, like zombie vampires or zombie werewolves? Things of that nature. Lichens. Pissed off women. Yeah, the video game or live action <laughs> yeah. side? We, yeah, we'll start a video game. Um, we have a lot of stuff we can still do with zombies. So uh, in Dead Rising 4, we are bringing in new types of zombies uh, and also looking at giving them a little bit of a soul. So that, that's... Well, that's no fun. Seen. I have well, your minds the whole kill them. Yeah. We are evolving and we want to change and we want to keep it fresh. So we're always looking at new ways. So I'll, from the movie point of view, I'll say um, I'm a huge fan of Penny Dreadful, which was a mashup of every single 19th yeah. century monster myth and crazy story. And uh, I think the world is really calling out for a, something that is sort of self-referential and self-aware. It's one thing about zombie shows that I think is really missing is this sort of sense of self-awareness that everyone knows what a freaking zombie is by now, right? Uh, but just mashing up all of the contemporary things into a single show might be a lot of fun. Nice question. Right here. I was just wondering with so many different types of zombie movies and games and all that kind of stuff, how do you differentiate yourself? How, how do you separate yourself from everybody else and, and like what everybody else is doing? Keep it, you know, keep it original. And for the cast, like how involved were you? I, you know, you said you did your junk thing. 
but <laughs> I mean, were you? That will be it? forever known as Marie's junk thing. That'll just Sorry. be. Yeah. I'm okay with it. <laughs> were, were you were you really involved in, in the stunts and you know making some of the decisions like were you ad libbing? I mean, how involved were you guys in that process? The, why don't we start with the cast and you guys can answer that bit and then we'll get to the other bit. Well, I'll say that one of the things I like about, you know, when you work on a certain level of film, like where this is, that we, I could call Tim and be like, I really think that she should do this, or she would never do that, or, you know, I really feel like you guys gave us a lot of ground to plead our case, at the very least, you know, and some of it made it and some of it didn't, and that's certainly fair, but it was really great to be able to honestly have a conversation about where you think that person came from or was going or anything else, and I thought that was something that I really liked about that. I mean, it doesn't have as much to do with the zombie genre as it did for me as a character development perspective, but um, these guys were certainly really open to like any crazy ideas that we had, like stabbing people in the junk, I guess. Well, yeah, like, this is not gonna go away. It's, it's yeah. not gonna go away. Now. Once it's stamped, it kind of right? just hovers, yeah. yeah. You know, Ke Keegan uh, lobbied pretty hard not to be dead at the end of the first movie. Uh, and uh, that just sort of slowly sunk in. We actually shot a scene where she died and, and we saw her get eaten. And we just decided, no, actually, I think it, you know, based in part on that conversation, we decided, no. Oh, the whole first movie, I was like, I'm not going to die. You just wait. Yeah. <laughs> I, on more of a macro level about your question, how do we differentiate this, right? When we looked at the, the intellectual property as a whole, how do we make this not be the walking dead light? Right? We have a very, very tight budget. We're supposed to gotta make it 90 minutes, but on a really kind of 60 minute television budget. If you played the game at all, it's a really interesting world. Almost all zombie IP you see, the whole world becomes zombified. In this one, it's an outbreak, a quarantine wall goes up, and outside that quarantine, it's just business as usual. You're just sitting in your lazy boy watching this on the news. And inside's where all the hell's taking, is breaking loose. So when we looked at it, we kind of thought of it, um, because the way the game works is a ticking clock. You have to resolve kind of the mystery and get the hell out of there in 72 hours. So it's like the show 24 to us meets Night of the Living Dead and was able to tell a story in a very contained space um, and to know that once you get on the other side of the wall, you're okay versus a, a normal zombie fair where, you know, you're a human and you're a human, you're trying to find others and keep surviving. That's how we felt that we could differentiate and be able to tell something on a, a lower budget and still keep it really tight. And when you, uh, when you, as a director, when you cast your actors, listen to their ideas. Nobody knows their characters better than them. They'll know their characters better than I will. Uh, my job is to service them to the best of my ability, but really I want to listen to Keegan, I want to listen to Marie, I want to listen to Jessica, except Jessica kept wanting to Staple fight. Staple gun. Yeah. <laughs> no one's fucking listening to me. But they're... Uh, it's the pussy stapler. Yeah. <laughs> the pussy stapler. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't, don't put that on the internet, please. Sorry. Oh, it's already on the internet. That's... <laughs> Sorry. So most of their ideas are legit. <laughs> Jessica, did you want to add to the to the question of your process and other what was going on? Gun, other than I'm pussy stuff. I'm pretty sure yeah, I yes, ended at its stable gun. This is the most times I've ever said that word in like 15 minutes. Yeah, a lot. Um, Probably. Yeah, no, this was a, this was, you know, a lot of times on set you don't, you don't feel like it's a collaboration. You are told to do word for word exactly what you're there to do. And that's fine, but this was, this was one of those times, you know, we, we went through a lot of changes as we were going. I know, a lot of things changed with my character, and I think I almost died like 17 different times. Every day we I show up and like, we're gonna, you. Yeah, you're like, we're gonna kill you again. Like maybe tomorrow, we finish the movie, and you're like, we might reshoot, <laughs> we're gonna kill you. Then I see you at a golf tournament a month ago, we're like five days from the movie coming out, and he's like, we're still thinking about killing you. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and like, I know you're not joking, like you were still, can't, like he was gonna shoot me dying on the golf course on his iPhone. And I'm like, <laughs> shut it in there at the very end with the stable gun. Um, no, but it was, we were, we were, it was, it was wonderful. They were, it was a really, it was a huge collaboration. Like we were, even when we were shooting, I mean, I know that might have been a bit of a pain in the ass for you guys a lot of Never. times. Never. <laughs> okay. Um, but we, they, were, they were very open to, <laughs> to our ideas and, you know, changing dialogue, changing storylines. And like Pat said, we, we know our characters best and they wrote them for us, but they allowed us to, to really play. And it was fun. And, and Tomas was saying this earlier. It was, I think the nice thing about our, our film in the Dead Rising franchise is there is that mix in the first film, you get that kind of more campy, fun vibe. And then in the second one, in Endgame, it's more of that kind of 28 days later, more serious, like a like lot of action, a lot of action sequences. So it's going to be fun to see where it goes in the future and kind of combining those two things yeah. and really staying true to the game with that. So it was great. It was, we had a blast. 
Marie? Staple gun, though. Seriously. Staple gun. I already told my story to answer that question. I can't even top that. Um, yeah, it was just really nice to, uh, for me as a performer, um, especially working on a, uh, I'm on a, I'm on a, you know, dictatorship sometimes on another show that I'm on where it's very rigid and you got to do what you're told, but it was so nice <laughs> to have the option um, with this lovely team over here um, to give us the freedom as performers um, to put our own little flavor into our characters, which was really nice and I had such a great time. But I'm also a fan of just doing what I'm told and honoring the writing and these stories and characters that have been wonderfully created with this great backstory. So I was just happy to be a part of it. Well said, well said. Uh, yes, right there. Hey, somebody run her a microphone. Thank you. Hello, I'm Leilani. Sorry, lost my voice at a particular totally fun understand. dance party. Absolutely. Um, this is for all of you. I've, actually, was there a particular scene in, personally that was difficult for you to film? And how has this particular project differed from any other projects you've done? Hmm. Uh, I had no problems filming any scenes. <laughs> it was really easy for me. I love it. What's, how is it different from the other projects you've done? You mean like playing a nun? It's pretty different from that for me. Or a fairy. <laughs> a little different, just a you, little. You, <laughs> you know, as a director, you, uh, you hope and pray that one day somebody phones you and asks you to direct a zombie movie. So this is very different from anything I've ever done. Uh, and what you look forward to is finding new ways to kill zombies, and that's all we did. I went to bed every night thinking about how can I kill a zombie in a way we haven't seen before. Staple gun. You haven't done the staple gun, yeah. And I wasn't aware of the pussy thing either, but we... Uh, and we, just, we know, we, we, we know. We, we, Googled, uh, we, we Googled badass weapons on a daily basis to try and figure out how to come up with combo weapons. You probably uh, shouldn't say I was not aware of the pussy thing. <laughs> so maybe not the sentence you want to go with. But, um, you know, ultimately, it's, uh, that's what this job There's is. Like, what, uh, moving on from that. Like, the little guy, take him away. Yeah. Why? And every day is a challenge. We shot it in 18 days, so every scene had its own set of uh, uh, limitations. And it was a difficult film to make in that, just from a scheduling standpoint and a financial standpoint. We didn't have a ton of money. We didn't have a ton of time. My goal was to have a lot of fun. And I think we did that. I'll, I'll add one. Um, it's kind of a the most challenging scene, but then also sort of satisfying when you see it is, uh, and I'd say this to any aspiring filmmakers in the crowd, if you're ever shooting in a parkade and you want to do the whole thing pitch black with just little pools of light, uh. flares are a really bad idea. Uh. Uh, really bad. Uh, flashlights are great. They don't give off smoke. They don't threaten to burn people. They don't sort of randomly fail to light or go off at the wrong moment. Um, and they're probably easier to jam in people's mouths too, so. What exactly are you saying? <laughs> yeah, what Tim's talking about. We the talk pussy, the pussy flashlight. Yeah. Well, wait a minute, hold no, on. This, this, hold on. Had, this had nothing to do with that, Zach. <laughs> hold on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I stepped in that way before I even knew what the hell I was saying. We shot a scene, took a day and a half to shoot with nothing but flares. They they stay lit for 45 seconds. The special effects guys say that this is the good smoke. Uh, this stuff's healthy. It's a Ask my lungs. It's it's, it, no, they're not. No, there's no such thing as good smoke. There's no vitamins in that crap, right? It's not like it's, it's going to be, you know, healthy. No, no, there is such a thing as good smoke. <laughs> <laughs> you, that that could have been a microphone. Oh, That's right. what Zachary no. told me anyway. I'm Wait a minute. <laughs> She's not wrong. Uh, I, I think, guys, we have time for one more question. So whoever the last one is, it better be really fun. You have 52 seconds. Let's go. Uh, uh, you're like, I, I'm, you're second guessing your question now. Okay, go, go, do it, do it. Um, so this is for the director and the developers. So again, so like in terms of separation, I'm kind of being specific to your zombies after just watching the clip. Um, so developing like, so you've got games like The Last of Us and stuff like that. How are you like coming up with creative ideas to step up on things like that in terms of like with your new game in? number four and stuff like that. In terms of directing, like you've got Shaun and the Dead, how are you, how are the zombies different, essentially? Uh, all right, like, well, well you, you always want to start with the classic, right? Uh, the, the shambling horde is a, a staple of everything, but people got used to it. It's like everybody would say, like, I could run away from those zombies. And then things like 28 Days Later came out where they were faster and, and more vicious. So we're always looking for new ways to do it. And that's why we've added uh, that extra class right now, which actually the zombies are thinking. They're not mindless anymore. They're still vicious. Uh, they're still always after you. But 
but we want to give the, the player more opportunities to, to deal with more things. And, um, and as we've been saying, or actually, I want to say pussy, since I haven't had a chance to say that with the time we have left. So I wanted to throw that out there. So we're always tuning and playing that game. And we're looking at it and evolving it. Uh, when you're making a game, you have time to do that. When they're shooting a movie, they have to decide what they're doing and go for it in a short amount of time. We have a much longer cycle. And we can play around with what's working. And, and that's what we do. Quickly, as a director, I just kept throwing out ideas saying we should do this. And one of the many zombie aficionados, and there's a lot of them, would say, nah, they did that in this movie. It's like, ah, damn, you go away and you try and think up something else. Until finally you come up with something and everybody goes, oh, yeah, I haven't seen that before. And now you've got something to build upon. But uh, you're right, everything's been done. And it's tough. You've got to watch all the movies. You've got to figure out what's fresh, how to make it interesting, how to keep it scary. and. Uh, um, hopefully we'll make zombie movies for a long time and people will find ways to make them more compelling. The, the new movie's called Pussy Rising. It will be out. Um... <laughs> Coming soon Whoa. to a theater near you. Colin Stable Gun. <laughs> <laughs> or Thank like, you. You're welcome. Thank Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank let's hear it for our Thank Dead you. Rising panelists, please. Rise. Rise. Keep it going for these guys. Keep it going for these guys. Get out of here, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. Keep it going, 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 keep it going. You can dance it off too, you can dance it off too. We should have some music that plays so everybody can dance off the stage. Was that fun? Do you all enjoy yourself? Oh my God, I literally just tried to go, and I, that's all that came out. I squeaked. The fuck is wrong with me? Uh, what? Well, I know that. I, I clearly don't have a voice. Uh, are you guys enjoying your time in Nerd HQ this year? Awesome, awesome, awesome. I so appreciate you. Thank you so much. We have, how many, how many panels do we have today? Three, two more panels. We're two panels, oh, it's okay. We're two panels away from finishing Nerd HQ 2016. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed yourself all this weekend and thank you for all of your support and thank you for all of your love. And I hope that if we get to do this next year, which I feel like we're probably gonna be able to do. No guarantees. But if we get to do it, I hope every single one of you is back. Bless you guys, thank you so much for coming.